Hey guys, this is the second part of my videos tutorial that I was showing you earlier. Uh, you know, in the previous one, you know, I was showing you the structure of my uh, project. You know, I showed you the data access layer, and then of course, you know, first, and then I have uh, next thing I have is of course the models, uh, as you, you might have guessed by now. You know, those uh, this update, this classical address, the vendor, vendor category, contact person. These are the new models, and of course, these account view models and identity model. Those are the one you know provided by the template. Basically, what I have done is I basically modified this so that I can use additional information to the user. Let's say if you use it, I'm going to log off, and then you know I can register this one. By default, you know you you don't have all this information, but you can you know customize that you know default code to pr have all this information persisted into your backend database. Anyway, that the, basically my model is very simple. You know, I have, of course, you know, main thing. I as I as I showed you in the demo, I have a vendor category. It just contains the ID, which is the primary key of the table, and the name and description properties. And then, of course, other thing. The other thing is a vendor right here. Um, I have a ID and a vendor category ID and a vendor object. Here's my vendor name and description, and uh, I would like to know the address of that vendor. That's why I have a you know object called address, vendor address, and vendor contact person, the person that I can contact to, right? And this this is basic matter data information like when the record was created, who created those information, and then whether this record is active or whether when did the, the date that was modified. All those basically you know that we do in in regular database creation, basic information. Okay, and then of course you know this is the contact person person information like email all those things. And here is the address of that person. Okay, these are the basic schema as I showed you in my databases here, like vendor, and like vendor and vendor category, and right is a vendor, um, vendor object, and of course the address. And this poor table right here is a created by, uh, you know, migration schema. Okay, that is once I have my schema. Of course, very first thing you have, since I like I told you before, you know, I use this um, code first migration. I have done that tutor video tutorial. I, I have already recorded videos on those, and if you guys need refresh courses on that one, you can find my videos. Anyway, and it's, some of the things that I would like to tell you about is is this stuff like here. Um, if if you look at this, my um, uh, when you do when you write the model first design so basically you know by default SQL server the, the the SQL server uses if it's a string data type uses an n bar char if you want like bar char you have to do customization if you, if you, if your column is required then you have to either you have two options either you can use uh, something called you know annotation uh, you can do um, let's say you know for example the address one field your domain app that you want it to be required in the backend database either you can do uh, required like that right or you can do a custom uh, you can use a custom you can do your entity configuration your domain object configuration which the, I will show you that code I would I would definitely prefer the second option because like you know when you do uh, stuff annotation your your uh, domain model is already very cluttered you might have, you know, it's a required, you want to be customized one, certain length, all those things. Instead of doing that, we can use a Fluent API to do, con to do that configuration, okay? Uh, I'll show you what that means, what I'm talking about. You will see this one right here, for this little folder called Entity Configuration. And this, that is what I'm trying to, uh, okay, this is, what I'm, this is what I'm talking about here. Here, well, even before that, if you go into, um, you know, this is, I have the DB context right here called being DDB, vendor DB context, and of course this is application DB context. Okay. You see my uh, IDB set, I have just a vendor category and a vendor, only those two uh, new classes added into I, my into IDB set, right? And then, of course, you know, this is my configuration information. Okay, this this is the method this is the this is where you can basically create your you know do uh, your, your all kind of configuration here um, 
here whether someone you can you can by default you know like the Visual Studio by default it create a when it creates a table it try to make the table plural which I, sometimes I don't like really like it so if you want if you don't like those you can do you know you can remove that this remove that convention and at the same time let's say um, so instead of using annotation, I would like to prefer to do something like this. I can say, hey, model builder, us using the configuration, try to use this configuration instead at runtime. Yeah, well, when you do them, when you are doing the migration, right? So um, I'm not going to talk about migration in this video tutorial because I have already, I have already done that one. But like, if needed later, I will be recording. Anyway, so let's look at our example. Let's look at a very simple example here. I have a class, that class is basically inheriting from this, you know, a generic version of entity type configuration here. It's, it's, it's um, I'm saying it is for the address. So in, an in inside the default constructor here of this class, I basically do the setting. So I'm saying to this one, the address one is required. That makes, that m just by having this code, this piece of code right here, it becomes a not nullable column in our backend database. And I have also would like to, you know, I would like to know this not not going to be more than 255 bar char uh, 255 characters, and it's Unicode false by default. Unicode tr Unicode would be true. That's why you will see n bar char. But I'm here. I'm saying, you know what? I would like to have a non Unicode. That perhaps that's ASCII non Unicode. So um, make it like a bar char. That's what it's, it is doing. Exactly the same idea for the address two, but like most of the time, you know, in real life, address two might be uh, empty, so that's why it's a nullable column. And uh, with the same pattern, city is also 255 bar star character by this, you know, uh, uh, fluent API convention. And the same idea for the state information in the zip code. I'm just giving it this guy a 30 character, but it's not really needed 30 characters, you know, just. And of course the country, I would like to know the country, that's why it's required. I want up to 255 characters and I want it to be non bar Just by doing that, you don't, this is really easier to do if you have to change it. You don't have to worry about changing domain and stuff. You just come into your class and change it. It's all good. So like I said, you know, you, it, when you do a domain first design, you have two options, either, either to do your domain annotation or you can do it like this with using configuration. Exactly the same idea, I'm not going to go, like same idea for the vendor uh, vendor category here, you know, I, I want this name field to be required and then it has to be 255 character length. And the description is, I have given like up to 1000 characters and it's a nullable. That is that, and of course the vendor is more involved, like this is a vendor configuration. Okay, I'm not going to go into a basic property, but the like only thing I'm going to cover here, like how to do, a, let's say when you have like a foreign key relationship, how to do a mapping here. So you can use this method or has modified, and of course it takes, it takes this lambda expression. You're going to say, okay, here's a vendor modified by its object. So if you if you go into my domain object here, vendor class here, if you go look at into here like vendor created by this is object application user object, right? So for this vendor. Either okay, the vendor modified by it has with the many to other table and has a foreign key. There is a foreign key with a column called modified by ID. So basically, we are saying, hey, we will have a foreign key with a given name into our vendor table, which is referring to this the vendor modified by property. Of course, that is by it is referring to application user. And it is optional. That foreign key could be null. That if you look it into a uh, vendor right here, vendor um, created by ID is n bar char 128. It's a nullable column. That's what that has optional means. Okay. It's same thing for the this one is a uh, vendor created by is also optional here. And that's why I have to use it has optional method. 
But what if you want your foreign key to be required and you're going to say has required, you're going to call this use your, your has required method, you know, and this is your. Uh,